in liberation as opposed to incarnation. There's one last thing I would like to point out to you. Also, by the way, you should know, because Christ and Mary are, are all over the, uh, uh, the Quran, um, the incarnation, no. In Islam, no. Virgin birth, no problem. Um, the ascension, no problem. The crucifixion, absolutely not. Absolutely not. God does not treat his prophets that way, and Christ was one of his greatest prophets, second only to Muhammad. And in fact, in apocryphal literature in Islam, Christ is supposed to come back at the end of time to break the cross and bringing all things in submission to Allah. So Christ is breaking the cross. I once started writing an imaginary dialogue between a Muslim who goes to heaven and Christ. And the Muslim sees our Lord on the right hand of the Father and said, well, I didn't expect to see you here. You were supposed to come back and, and break the cross. And Christ responds, no, no, I was broken on the cross, which is how you got here. <laughs> now, everything in, most things in the Quran, I should tell you, are very much like the Old Testament. I mean, where, after all, did Muhammad get his material? Where do you think this came from? He got it from, from uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament, and he got it from Gnostic Gospels. Uh, so it's, it's, it's no surprise. Uh, but, of course, if, when you read the Quran, you'll see he doesn't get it right. He doesn't get lineages right. He doesn't get events right. He repeats some stories. And then, most egregious of all, do you know how the Trinity is defined in uh, the Quran? And why Muslims find it so offensive as a form of polytheism? Anybody know? Uh, Earth and Mary. Bingo. Father, Son, and Mary. Well, I'd be repelled by that too. But uh, because that's in the Quran, Muslims are more or less compelled to think that's what we think the Trinity is instead of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Where did he get that? I've never met a Christian who thought the Trinity was Father, Son, and Mary. Well, there was, in fact, a heretical sect in northern uh, Arabian Peninsula called the Coloridians who, who did believe that. And that most probably is where uh, Muhammad got that part of his material. And then, of course, he also knew the Gnostic Gospels. If you see some of the uh, miracles related to Christ in there, they're, they are very clearly uh, from the Gnostic Gospels as well. But no cross! No cross, ladies and gentlemen. I sometimes think St. Peter uh, was a Muslim. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Because he was the thou shalt not to God, to Christ. Muslims basically say to God, thou shalt not. You sh thou shalt not be crucified. Thou shalt. They have a certain idea of who God is, as omnipotent and as pure will, who couldn't be that if he did these things. And what do we see from St. Peter when Christ tries to wash his feet? Thou shalt not. After which our Lord says, then you'll have nothing to do with me. And earlier than that, when Christ said that he now has to go to Jerusalem, suffer greatly, be crucified and raised from the dead, what does St. Peter say? Uh-uh. Thou shalt not. And what does our Lord say? Get behind me, Satan. And I would suggest to you that Islam is the great thou shalt not. I'm serious. As much as they think they are preserving God's omnipotence in its pristine fashion, they deny uh, and basically cir circumscribe what he can do and tell him that thou shalt not. There's another interesting... Um, contrast between the Old and New Testament, I mean, sorry, between the Quran and indeed the New Testament. In the Quran, almost everything takes a place as the direct result of an act of God. In other words, it's the first cause acting in history. The first cause does all of these things. There don't seem to be any intermediary causes. Well, that's the way the Old Testament tells much of its story too, doesn't it? It's God directly acting in history the walls of Jericho coming down. Uh, it's, it's seen in the way of God acting directly. Uh, 
And of course, when in the New Testament, this is the way the apostles think. They have that Old Testament mindset, and when they come upon the man born blind, they say to our Lord, now, was that because of his sins or because of his parents' sins? And what does Christ say? He said, no, it's, it's not because of his sins or his parents' sins. Neither. In another episode, when the Tower of Siloam crashes down and kills, what, I think those 18 people, they again ask him, was, it, was that because of their sins or the sins of their parents? And he, again, our Lord says, no, it's neither. You know, it's faulty construction. <laughs> he didn't say that, but you understand that this perspective on reality opens the door to secondary causes in the natural world. That you're actually not sick because you've disobeyed God or your parents disobeyed God. It's because you have an infection. And if you have an antibiotic, you can take care of the infection. It doesn't mean you become a saint. It just means you have a good antibiotic. So I, I point this out because this too is going to be a major feature of this huge drama I'm going to take you through uh, next week about causality in Islam. As um, this Lebanese, famous Lebanese um, American scholar said to me um, several years ago, you may have heard him, he teaches at, uh, at Johns Hopkins, um, Fuad Ajami. He said, everywhere I go in the Islamic world, it's the same problem. Cause and effect, cause and effect. By which he meant the denial of cause and effect in the natural world. Why? Because we have God as the first and only cause. And for him to be omnipotent, there can be no other cause before him. Uh, and this leads to the denial of of cause and effect. And I will dramatize that for you next week in ways I hope you'll remember. One last thing about Islam for you to understand before we go to questions and before um, Sabatino raves to, uh, raises another card in the back of the room. <laughs> when Thomas Aquinas was approached by his fellow Dominicans, they asked him, well, how are we supposed to deal with these Muslims? And St. Thomas said, well, you can't deal with them from our revelation because they don't accept it. And you can't deal with them from their revelation.